Today, the Zildjian family and the Zildjian factory makes, I don't know, 100, 200 different types of symbols, 400 different types of symbols. And what distinguishes one from another, well, we have the size of it, the weight of it, the shape of it, the type of hammering it has, the type of lathing it has, the proportion between the size of the bell and the rest of the symbol. All of these things change the basic characteristics in the sound of a symbol. When I was a kid, they made three symbols. They made ride symbols, crash symbols, and hi-hat symbols. And when I listened to the early records, the very earliest records, like Gene Krupa and even early Buddy Rich records, he, they didn't really have ride symbols. They had a bunch of crash, or even they would, would call them splash symbols, and they were more of effect symbols. And the timekeeping was done on the hi-hat or the snare drum. And then eventually, I believe Gene Krupa asked uh, Avidus Zildjian to make a bigger, heavier symbol so that it could carry the ride pattern. And the symbols that I'm looking for have this legato quality, but also have a definite kind of ticky wood sound so that the, the pulse um, is obvious to the other musicians without it being staccato. So I'm, I'm almost looking for a symbol that has a really woody attack, but then almost like the whole rainforest of overtones in there that will connect those points in time together. So this is a, a 22 inch Constantinople ride cymbal and um, they're really consistent and they give me what I'm looking for and we hear this sound. And you really hear the woodiness in the attack but then the connection between each attack with a nice, as I said, like rainforest of overtones. Then I'm looking for a contrasting symbol over here, maybe higher in pitched, maybe lower in pitched, um, but with similar characteristics. And maybe I think of this as my, my biggest, loudest symbol that's gonna support the heaviest part of the music and this has a slightly smaller texture that I use when the music is a little bit lighter. And but you hear the same woodiness, but a little more contained sound. And so if I'm thinking about a progression of a song that begins maybe uh, smaller and simpler. I might start here on the hi-hat and then move to this symbol and then finally move here at the kind of climactic point. Um, we're timekeepers, we need to play the songs, but we're also orchestrating the music and we use our different sounds to help us orchestrate different parts of a song, right? And Another way to, to enhance the range of orchestration is where you play on the cymbal. When you use the bell, that's a more staccato, brighter, more projecting sound, but you're not gonna use that behind a bass solo or behind a flute solo. So you want to, to have an awareness of, of the different characteristics within one instrument. This is one instrument and then within the range of your instruments up here so that you can support the music in the most pleasing and mature way.